Today we have come together on the special occasion that is multidisciplinary international conference. Multidisciplinary perspectives on business management, social sciences, humanities, economics, law, marketing, education, environment, science and technology towards sustainable development. Friends, we have provided you. We have provided you that. First of all, in the beginning, the inaugural speech. Then there is the presidential speech. Then keynote address. Then some resource persons will speak on the topic. So I am going to start the program. We welcome address by our principal. Friends, we are really sorry that our principal, Dr. T. L. Golombe, sir, is busy with some serious matters, so he is not available here. On the behalf of him, I am going to deliver his message before you. As a principal of Jai Bhagwan Sabhavi Sanstas, Dev Shankar Abhutte Gramin Arts, Commerce and Science College, Dharmapur, I welcome all professors, scholars, and research students who have joined us on this online platform. At the outset, I congratulate and admire the efforts made by the teachers of our college. I congratulate Mr. S. T. Kavle, sir, who is the head department of economics. Dr. S. T. Munde, madam. Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce. Then Mr. A. D. Munde, Head Department of Commerce of our college, who are the conveners of this international e-conference on multidisciplinary perspectives on business management, social sciences, humanities, economics, law, marketing, education, environment, science, and technology towards sustainable development. We have included variety of subjects and disciplines so that. The scholars belonging to different disciplines come forward and put forth their views and outcomes for sustainable development. Today we have with us the president of our college, Dr. Shivaji Rao Ji Gutte Sahay. He is the founder president of our college. I sincerely welcome our president on the behalf of behalf of college and our staff. He has established the Jai Bhagwan Seva Bhavi Samstha Dharmapur. And then let Shankar Rao Gutte Gramin Arts, Commerce and Science College. Only because of him, the students belonging to rural area are able to learn, are able to complete their graduation. Thousands of girl students are completing their education. They are taking higher education only because of the efforts of Dr. Shivaji Rao Ji Gutte Sahib. Finally, for this, for his contribution. And uh, in the educational field, he has been awarded Doctor of Letters by University of Bolivia, Cent Central University of Bolivia, Central University of Bolivia, America. So he has been awarded doctorate. We have with us Doctor Pravinji Saptar Shishar, who is visiting professor Salisbury University, USA. The second grade scholar Baba Lola Samuel, who is from Federal University of Agriculture, Nigeria, Africa. And Michael, sir, who is from Nigeria, I welcome once again all of you. And the same at the same time, I request all of you to come forward with definite outcomes, which will be beneficial for sustainable development. Again, I welcome Dr. Indrajit Bhagat, sir, who is the chairman of keynote address session. I take your leave. Before that, before that, I am going to announce that. This e-conference e has been inaugurated. Thank you, thank you very much. After this, I will call upon Dr. Sanjeevani Munde. She will introduce the topic. She will give introductory speech. She will give introductory speech. Over to ma'am, Dr. Sanjeevani Munde.
Thank you, Mama Raghu Sir. Myself, Dr. S. D. Munde, Assistant Professor in Faculty of Commerce at Late Shankar Rao Gupte Gramin Arts, Commerce and Science College, Dharmapuri, Taluka Parai Vajana District, Bid. Today's international e conference on multidisciplinary uh, perceptives of business management, social science, humanities, economics, law, marketing, education, envi environment, science, and technology towards sustainable development organized by Department of Commerce, Economics, and IPS. I welcome all of you on this special occasion. I express my deep gratitude towards Dr. Shivaji Rao Gutte, the president of our, our institute, Dr. T. L. Rombe, the principal of our college, for their support and in encouragement. Once, I, once again, I welcome you all. We have included number of disciplines so that definite state, statement should come out for the Sustainable Development. I welcome all respected research scholars and I request them to discuss the issue in detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monday, Madam. Thank you, Dr. Sanjuri Monday, Madam. After this introductory speech, we are going to start keynote address session. Dr. Sabdarshi Sir is with us. Before that, I am going to give brief introduction of Dr. Sabdarshi Sir. His biodata is so vast, so vast, that it is difficult to complete and uh, to throw a light throw light on his uh, entire bio, bio data so briefly i will uh, introduce him dr praveen ji saptarshi who is msc phd in environmental studies he is visiting professor at salisbury university maryland united states of america he is professor emeritus at department of environmental science savitri bai phule pune university pune he has been teaching since 48 years. Seven students have been awarded MPhil degree under his guidance. 51 students have been awarded PhD degree under his supervision. It's a great achievement. 51 students have been awarded PhD. He has published 154 research papers. He has published two research volumes. He has worked as an editor also. He has delivered keynote addresses more than 10, 100 times, more than 100 times. He has published 14 textbooks. His biodata is so vast, so vast, that I am really impressed. And I think all of you have been impressed. Salute to you, sir. Salute to you, Dr. Saptar Shi, sir. May I request Dr. Saptar Shi, sir, to start keynote address before that. I am going to mention the chairman of this session is Dr. Indrajit Bhagat, sir, who is assistant professor and head of the Department of Commerce at Ashwant Rao Chavan Mahavidyalaya, Ambadogal. Chief Chairman, I welcome you on the behalf of my college, on the behalf of Department of Commerce and Department of Economics. Thank this you, conference sir. has been organized in collaboration with Dr. Baba Swanbedkar Marathwada University of Rangabad, Department of Commerce, Department of Economics and IPS of our college. I welcome Indrajit Bhagat, sir, and he is uh, playing his role as the chairman in this session. Now, after the introduction of Dr. Saptarshi, sir, may I request you to start keynote address and throw a comprehensive light on the subject of conference. Over to you, Dr. Saptarshi, sir. Please. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Temburne, sir, for uh, very good words about me. Uh, he has explained me something like a great person. I am just like you, and I am just still a student of uh, geography and environmental science and environmental studies. Chairman, sir, 
uh, it is really pleasant to see uh, to to have a keynote uh, under the chairmanship of a very smart looking <laughs> doctor <laughs> so chairman sir and <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i also welcome uh, all the uh, participants who have joined ex joined this e seminar e conference and they have really expressed their concern about the sustainable development ladies and gentlemen first of all we will see what is sustainable development sustainable development is the development which caters the needs of population present population but keeping some stock for the future generation so it is based on the basic human ethical principle and that principle is intergeneration equity and that's why uh, i am really happy that you have included the scholars from humanities also to discuss this issues related to sustainable development so it is basically uh, based on the ethical principle of inter generation equity equity is also one of the important human principle ethical principle and which is adopted by constitution of india and we all have become means we are on par those who are educated those who are not educated uh, or even there is gender equity even uh, some are poor illiterate but even then they have a right as the human being so all women the poor people and the all dalit so they got the right to vote when constitution of india came into being so this is the great great uh, that the you can say that the great work done by uh, all these stalwarts like mahatma gandhi baba saheb ambedkar jawaharlal nehru uh, uh, abul kalam azad or vallabh bhai patel or many 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 uh, people were there but if you see the background our constitution of india is al also advocating the sustainable development because uh, our constitution shows the reflection of gandhian principles which were tested in the long drawn freedom struggle and that's why gandhian ideas and baba saheb uh, the scholarly ideas of baba saheb and jawarlal nehru so it is mixed mixed way uh, thing in constitution of india and that's why it is a very good uh, document for sustainable development when the sustainable development this document was under preparation it was prepared by uh, then prime minister and uh, of norway uh, brutland so she has prepared this under the guidance of many scholars from the science and technology as well as from sociology as well as from economics and finance then corporate sectors etc so she has prepared this document and that is known as our common future now underline the word common it is related to common future it is not related to one person who is getting amazon is getting windfall profit and many other people are suffering from the uh, food security or hunger so this is not the development sustainable development is the development of common people it is the inclusive development it is not exclusive development so exclusive development was advocated in vedas exclusive development is always advocated in our caste system means some people are more equal or they are superior to others and this kind of hierarchy is there so 
if such hierarchy if at all we want to maintain then sustainable development cannot be possible because sustainable development is based on inclusive approach of development if you are constructing the six lane four lane roads it may not be meant for common people it may be meant for 15% of rich population those who can afford to have the cars big cars so this is not the inclusive approach one should understand and the academic community and the students who are uh, studying in colleges they should and universities they should understand that this is construction of big big roads is not at all the sign of development so another thing is that the uh, there are three major dimensions as brookland commission has specified and those dimensions are social and then the economic and environment so these three dimensions should be taken into account and that's why i congratulate the organizers who have aptly selected the theme that multidisciplinary approach for this conference and they have also mentioned what are the disciplines which can uh, address the issues of sustainable development first of all i will take a brief i, I will give you the brief idea regarding Regardless. share my views regarding the briefly regarding what what should be the approach uh, towards sustainable development in business management in humanities in economics and so forth so, so first of all we will see business management so business management students are mainly placed they are managers the students are future managers of corporate sector and that's why we know that the corporate sector has destroyed the um, ecology destroyed the environment and that's why they have to shoulder more responsibility towards sustainable development and that's why in india also there is uh, the uh, indian industrial uh, the um, uh, the uh, what is that the industrial federation is there and they they also give uh, the prices for sustainability and such prices are given to big corporates middle level industries middle level business or even the small scale business so the this is confederation of indian industry cii so they give and that's why the people are motivated the managers from corporate body they are motivated towards the uh, achieving the sustainability and for that they mainly go for this ems environmental management system which starts from the design of the product the product should be designed in such a way that it will consume less energy it will require less amount of resources it it will because many car uh, producers the manufacturers they they advertise that in our car 10% parts are recycled means they are not using the coal or they are not using the steel uh, which is recovered from iron ore so but, but they are recycling steel so some some say that 50% steel in our car is recycled one then the some of uh, ebonite parts or the mm, so they they are also recycled plastic parts are also recycled and reinforced so they they give us the statistics and if they achieve that stat the uh, some level which is uh, really agreeable by cia then uh, then definitely they are uh, qualified to get 
the price of sustainability management. So actually, there is one concept in business management, and that is internalization of externalities. Means there are various externalities. For example, world recession is externalities. So this is the macroeconomics. But micro level economics means the economics of your own business may be different. And how you address this problem of externalities, which is created by external, for example, Ukraine war. So take the case of Tata Steel. Tata Steel is not involved in Ukraine war, but it is externality for Tata Steel. But how to handle with this externality? So this is in this way we we can also handle as a nation we supported the people uh, uh, by selling our wheat to uh, the ukraine people or european people because ukraine war is there that's why the uh, russian and ukrainian wheat uh, is not in the world market so we are pushing our product in the world market but again Repurgations are different. The, the domestic consumption uh, is not fulfilled, and that's why the uh, prices of wheat have been uh, increased sharply in last week because of, because of this export of wheat to the European country. So we have to stop this. So this is internalization of externalities. So we have to take the decision which is related to our own company, our own region, our own nation, so that the external problems can be um, can uh, can affect us in a very mildly, or their their effect intensity of their uh, um, effect will be reduced. So this is known as in business. Uh, management, it is known as internalization of environmental externalities. Means how to address the issues of climate change, how to address the issues of the uh, resource uh, resources, the scarcity of resources. So this is internalization. So I think that there should be one paper in business management on this internalization of the externalities especially environmental externalities then second one is ems environmental management system which is popularly called as iso international standard organization 14000 so if you go through that document it is thousand 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 pages of document the, the last part of document is called as iso 14001 which is the certificate part the previously it is written that it can be done it may be done like this and in certification this should be done to that particular level then it is okay okay then there are marking can be done and if you have got more than the score more than 60 percent then you are iso 14001 certified organization so that certification is also important then the uh, carbon credits are can be earned and the uh, you can also reduce carbon footprint and if you reduce one ton of carbon footprint compared to the normal or routine practices then it is you get one credit carbon credit and that credit can be sold in the market, international market, sold to the industries who are doing more carbon footprint from Annex A countries, because it was decided that the, the, the world is divided into two groups, A, one A group and B group. A group includes mainly industrially developed countries and Group B is industrially underdeveloped, developing countries like your country, Nigeria, my country, India. So 
or we are in annex b so we can sell carbon credit and the american industry can purchase it so that they can give certain money so it is it is also <clears throat> the flow of cash establishing flow of cash from developed region to the under developed region or you can consider it as a slightly you can say that a modest penalty to those who are the culprits of the climate change so this was decided in protocol but it is not in fact so the another thing is that in within your if you become the uh, manager sustainability manager in the corporate in some industry you should see that the how this uh, your practices can be clean and green even colleges the college principals and ipsc uh, chairman and that particular cell should see that the colleges should have the students should have the clean and green practices how to inculcate this kind of such kind of uh, Uh, attitude among the youths it is again the uh, your uh, skill so if if it is done then uh, nothing like it that you can get the not only just you, you should push the program like the tree plantation but also the program of the uh, how to improve green cover you should also carry out green audit and uh, on the with the and that green audit should be carried out with participation of students similarly here also in ems the participation should be right from the apex body like board of directors chairman managing director and board of directors so there should be commitment from the top and also part participation of the floor workers on the floor should also be ensured then and then only ems can be uh, you, you can earn the uh, iso 14001 certification so in this way the business uh, management requires the understanding of environment understanding of ecology and also economics the macro level economics and also micro economics so in this way it is really a good opportunity for the scholars from business management to carry out research on this some i i will just tell you share you one of my experience one person who was doing mba mba and i i was just in the class i was pressing that you should carry out the research or research projects related to environment and sustainability then he said that no no sir i am i am just uh, uh, my specialization is finance so how can i do this environmental uh, uh, environmental thing how can i include this environmental thing in the financial study so i said that okay you carry out one study from you select one bank and visit all the branches of that bank and just find out they what is what are the uh, advances given by that particular and what was the purpose for giving the loan sanctioning the loan and then we can find out that the if loan is sanctioned for for example world bank is sanctioning so many thousands of crores of uh, rupees or crores of dollars billions of dollars for construction of airports is it is it good thing so far as the carbon footprint in, footprint is concerned no it should be uh, different instead if you give the loans for the poor people who can also who are hawkers who can do the small business of vegetable selling purchasing the Uh, kabar or purchasing some uh, waste material so then 
that can be considered as environment friendly loans so finance if you do the finance the without uh, you can say the, what is that the uh, uh, without uh, some um, easily you can get the uh, finance for car right so this this policy is against environment so if you are giving finance for cars then it it is this means that the more number of cars are coming in your region and that's why traffic congestion the pollution air pollution and that that too the which is highly spread and which cannot be managed easily so this kind of things we should take into account so i gave him the project of visiting the branches and categorizing the uh, purpose of loan uh, which are sanctioned by the bank authorities and what is the carbon footprint and find out the uh, the practices uh, which are uh, showing less carbon footprint and practices which are responsible for more environmental impact so these things even in finance also uh, we can definitely consider uh, the environmental or the sustainability management attitude now coming to humanities humanities actually the conservation of environment or the how to deal with the Uh, global environmental problems global environmental problems are three major three problems are there one is the climate change then second one is biodiversity depletion and third one is ozone layer uh, depletion why these are considered as the global global issues this is mainly because whatever you do in your region you are free in your country no doubt about that but its impact is on at global level that's why at global level it was decided by all the countries to follow the rules or international rules and in that the we i will just take one example of agenda 21 what is agenda 21 agenda 21 means the agenda for the, the 21st century and it is to be passed it is it is it was declared in 1992 conference it was again elaborated in 19 sorry 2002 conference and it is again um, uh, stated in 2012 world conference on environment and development so that is mainly on sustainable development so this this type of uh conferences have given the protocol and one is important uh, one of the important thing is that they say that it should be politically accepted means it should be resolved in the congress in america or parliament in india or there may be some apex body in nigeria or some other countries so in this way it should be politically accepted and uh, the uh, passed uh, as a matter of the resolution by the people so in democratic setup it is passed in india and that's why this agenda 21 is there and accordingly there are also goals sustainable goals goals for sustainable development so these goals if you see that the first first is the equity first is remove hunger remove poverty so poverty is considered to be the major issue disparity is considered to be the major issues so this is related to humanity if environment is degraded if resources are limited then the resources will be grabbed by the powerful people and if resources are grabbed by powerful people there ought to be disparity if disparity is there then there ought to be 
the voices of lower class people will be suppressed or they won't have voice voiceless people and in this way the democracy is diminished is destroyed or is declined and if democracy is not there again there is no uh, modus operandi to recheck and uh, re um, generate the resources through democratically for example in india suppose democracy is there if healthy democracy is there we can oppose to the rules we can oppose to many 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 developmental uh, programs in uh, in your city so so called smart city and under the name of smart cities <laughs> going on so this should be opposed and when we will be in position to oppose it if there is healthy democracy but democracy is decline is destroyed because of disparity and everything can be regained if environmental issues have been resolved if such issues are resolved then there is possibility that we can regain uh, re the uh, democracy and we can have our own government so india is democratic country no doubt about that but is it democracy that in the period of lockdown uh, some 14 15 uh, mining projects have been sanctioned without concern of gram sabha because law says that unless and until gram sabha says yes the mining cannot be possible mining cannot be sanctioned in the um, the adivasi areas or in the tribal zone but in tribal zone I mean even one one important and which is not again which is which is not publicized so publicity is also in the hands of government and that is again creating more damage to environment for example one elephant uh, garden is given for kumbh mela so this is just nonsense and that's why you you, you cannot say that the elephants can it is it is not like that the uh, in your house suppose somebody is staying for 2 3 days and you can allow but that is also unless and until you allow or your permission is to be sanctioned so here the elephants they this uh, how how they can understand that for a month i will keep mum and uh, allow the people to wander here and there and then i will so this is this means that the elephants are driven away from their uh, protected areas so this and once they are driven away it is forever so it will affect on the diminishing population if it affect on the population of elephant in india so this is again international issue because many international environmental organizations are there they are fighting for humanity and we should not consider that they are from outside now there is a fashion by so called people rightist people that they consider that one one who is opposing this is considered that person is considered as desh drohi or sedition act can be um, can be applied to that or nac or what is that national security and all everything can be uh, under that law many people can be uh, are kept behind the bar this is against humanity so those who are studying humanity should also find out that those who are fighting for the cause of future generation should not be considered as the anti national or should not be considered as something anti development people they are the uh, real vanguards of uh, uh, of the sustainable development so we should protect them and another thing is that when we study humanity we can find out that the world is divided 
or any region is divided into two groups the culprits of environment and environmental issues and the sufferers due to environmental issues so culprits are always rich rich people of the rich class and the sufferers are poorest of poor so this uh, from riches to poorest so how to bridge the gap between this i said i i have written in one paper that this is environmental issues are nothing but the influence of affluence affluence means the rich people influence means the waste water which is uh, coming from the industry is called as effluent so this is influence of affluence so the humanities students sociology students economic students should understand this and they should um, at least make the people aware of this then democratic setup can take the care of this another uh, top uh, the subject which is uh, which is included in this conference is economics economics is really important to understand what is the economy of the world and what is the political economy of what is the political economy of the uh, nation or a region so our political economy or political economy of nigeria is such that it is it is, it is supporting the rich people and rich class so this is this is such things we should uh, take into account the world economy is dominant in such a way that they are siphoning the resources from the poor countries like lithium for the purpose of environment protection in rich countries the battery uh, lithium battery from the poor countries like nigeria and the the workers there are sufferers but the uh, we are happy those who are uh, in rich areas they are happy even you can see that the water issue the water is not available in rural india the polluted water is there and on the contrary in cities metro cities ample good water is there so this means that the uh, if if there is a news that in pune uh, for 2 hours water will not be supplied by the corporation authority if if this is uh, this is news in pune paper and the solapur people or bid people are they they laugh at such a news they say that uh, we have got the we get water from the central agency maybe gram panchayat or from the uh, nagar parishad uh, for 2 hours in a week so so it it is a news in pune that for this 2 hours the water supply will be hindered and otherwise the we get the water 2 hours in a week or 15 days so this is this is real disparity means who own the resources all the people own the resources but resources are utilized more by rich people this kind of exploitation we should try to uh, expose them and our students should be aware of such things otherwise what happened the environmental movement means we always say that we have planted trees we have cleaned the campus and this is goody 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 and we get the um, prize from the university best college best practices best and we also get the nac accreditation i think that the nac accreditation should be given to the college the students of which have participated in agitation they have come on the road and said that oh this road should not be there they should go to the villages and say that the gram sabha has not sanctioned this mining project so we are against this mining project if if this is done by one college and there may be uh, 
say 100 satyagrahis are arrested this should be written by iqsc cell that it is it is a pride it is one of the best practices on the campus and this should be given the importance so this is we should um, i mean to say that the we should understand the environmental economics means the economics with environmental bias with environmental concern for example gdp growth we always considered as the gross domestic production gdp gdp but at the cost of what so at the cost of environment if gdp growth is there which is found in india and this if this is the fact then we should be in economics it is again open ended research problem that you can find out this factor e e dash gdp what is gdp of india suppose so many billions of dollars this year but e gdp will be billions of dollars so many billions of dollars minus environmental loss how to calculate environmental loss the environmental loss can also be calculated in economics there are so many models you can also have your own model one one principle is uh, simple that the environmental loss can be quantified on the basis of the loss of uh, loss due to uh, the uh, some uh, diseases loss due to the say malaria or whatever it may be because of this air pollution because of water pollution diarrhea so cancer so this is these losses means can be calculated on the basis of the expense expenditure incurred on that particular treatment of the population total population this is or this is also environmental loss which the last two years we have done the expenditure on the uh, vaccination we have done the worldwide all the world economy has done th there was pressure on the world exchequer that that is the um, the uh, expenditure on the uh, incurred on this vaccination expenditure incurred on oxygen uh, cylinders everything means related to corona or covid 19 virus how to cure people at the uh, it was pandemic and that's why the government has the responsibility for that so this is these things are important if this is the loss this is environmental loss because this covid 19 has uh, has shown its impact as uh, we uh, it is not just the uh, uh, last years or two years uh, phenomenon this phenomenon can be related to the last 30 years of environmental degradation biodiversity is lost if biodiversity is maintained if microbial bi diversity is maintained microbial means small small microbes micro animals then they can also keep all the virus in balanced state and then if the virus all types of um, the uh, nasty viruses are kept in in the uh, modest form then they are not uh, uh, responsible for creation of pandemic so these things we have to take into account and finally i would say that the rate of consumption of resources should be equal or less than a rate of resource generation so this is and the addition due to renewable resources so first of all your rate of consumption should be reduced and this can be possible through law are there so you have also included the law there are so many environmental laws water act is there the air act is there waste management rules are there so all these laws cpcb prepared the rules and the um, means the bharat 4 bharat 7 
Bharat 5, Bharat 6, the, the norms of emission of the vehicular emission. So there are so many rules. If you follow law, that is good. But beyond that, you have to think that environment has two major functions. One is it acts as, which is generally not in the books. So that is, it acts as sink. It swallows your waste created in various industrial processes, created due to your movement, your business. So this and another function of environment is to provide you resources. So for both the functions are essential for development. And that's why we have to make the environment more and more powerful. So the final message that I would like to uh, underline is that reduce the, re, first of all, refuse the use of toxic material. Means if you are using some um, material which is toxic one, plastic or the wrapper that the foils um, in which you can just uh, say that the, the, the Western culture is there. So you can just keep the rotis uh, or the bread in that so that it become it it remains fresh for more so there are so many uh, items which are responsible for the, uh, improving shelf life so refuse to buy such refuse to use bottled water refuse to use which is packed one and which is having the preservatives so try to refuse and if you, if it is not possible if you are thirsty and you are on the bus stand or in a railway and you have no other choice but to buy the bottled water yes okay <laughs> your life is more important than the environment or in any any such principle so at least try to reduce the use of such material and reduce the total use of the total consumption and even further you can say that the recover try to recover from the waste just like we can uh, we have a tradition that this used shirt can be used for the cleaning the uh, floor or table or like this so the uh, reuse it again and again or recover it then recycle so people always uh, say that recycle recycle because it requires certain technology so before recycle, there are such five, six steps, and you should remember those steps. So finally, we, are, we have become greedy because of mass production and advertisement. If advertisement is there, if Bhagat sir is having a good car, I am tempted to have a good car. So this is, this is just like a, because of mass production, this kind of culture is developed. And Gandhiji was always saying to the Britishers that you are our friends. The people of uh, Great Britain are also our friends. But your economy is trying to, trying to swallow the rights of the people. And that's why we don't like this corporate culture. You are trying to uh, dominate our culture through this idea of mass production. So this is not good. So in Gandhi's world, the production by masses is certainly better than mass production. So with this message, try to find out which is, which I'm using this pen. If it is mass production, I will not use it. If it is produced in my village, then I will use, I will prefer to use the village product rather than the corporate product. So this message is very simple. The mass production is not the sign of sustainable development, but production by masses is the real sign of sustainable development. With these words, I wish my young friends to carry out research on these lines and be happy and be 
concern about environment, democracy, and then and then only we'll be concerned about sustainable development. With these words, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Sattarji, sir, for enlightening us. You have thrown a comprehensive light on the topic. Now, we have with us Dr. Indrajit Bhagat, sir. He is our neighbor, head of the Department of Commerce, Yashwant Rao Chavan Mahavidyalaya Ambazota. I request Dr. Indrajit Bhagat, sir, to express his views on this session. Dr. Indrajit Bhagat, sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. I'm audible now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes sir. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. And, uh, good afternoon to one and all uh, who are presented here and attending the uh, knowledgeable fist uh, which is delivered uh, in this conference uh, by Pravin, sir. Uh, Dr. Uh, Honorable Dr. T.L. Uh, Lumbe, sir, who is the principal of this college. Uh, Honorable Dr. Shivajira Gutti, sir, who is the president, uh, president of uh, Jai Bhagwan, uh, Jai, Jai Bhagwan Seva Vari Sarsta, Mr. Kavle ST, who is head of Department of Economics, my friend uh, Mr. Eddie Munde, sir, Department of uh, Commerce, head of Department of Commerce, and uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. S.D. Munde, Madam Ji. And all my dear friends, I deem, I, uh, I deem that uh, you all are uh, knowledge seeker, and you all are to be a stakeholder of this international event. At the outset, I would like to congratulate, congratulate and express my sincere thanks toward the organizer of this conference, uh, organizer IQAC and Faculty of Commerce of this college. Today, uh, in this uh, multidisciplinary international conference, with the a uh, very important team that are uh, multidisciplinary perspectives on business management and social sciences, humanities, economics, law, marketing, education, environment, uh, towards the sustainable development. I'm Dr. Indrajit, but once again, I greet you all, the dignitaries and participants uh, for being part of this uh, great event. Moving toward the, my, uh, my concluding uh, address, uh, I, I can say, uh, Dr. Praveen uh, Saptarshi, sir, a very profound person in this area, sir has uh, elaborated uh, and covered all these uh, essential points with uh, various examples uh, to sustainable development. He quoted in his keynote address that, uh, uh, that sustainable development is a development of common people. Right, sir? It's, it's, it's development of common people. There should be no any disparities uh, among the people, among the society. The sustainable development, the development of common people. At the start of this work, he then mentioned three major dimensions of social development uh, or, or uh, sustainable development. Uh, that the, these three di uh, dimensions are social development, economic development, and environmental development. Furthermore, he uh, he, he given this sustainable uh, idea of de uh, sustainable development that the human societies must live and meet their needs. Sustainable development is development that meets the uh, meets the need of society without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Uh, Dr. Praveen Saptashi then talk about the business management ideals, with related with the understanding with sustainable development related with the uh, business. He focused on the uh, importance of uh, internalization of environment externality. And further, he suggested various practices of EMS, that is environment management system. And for what? For keeping environment healthy. Even in colleges and institutions, we must keep Green, pra uh, green practices, green practices, green environment practices, like green audit, uh, then tree plantation program, etc. And it's not adopted by only institutional uh, uh, the staff members. It should be along with our students. And uh, we, we uh, generally uh, generally uh, do the, these things uh, through the various activities uh, from NSS, uh, NCC, and other culture. 
from um, uh, with with the help of other programmers coming to the humanities uh, subtesh sir aware us on global environment problems with uh, with various example like agenda 21 that is uh, sir i, I also uh, not aware about that agenda 21 but i uh, today i aware about that agenda, what is it uh, agenda 20 21 and uh, during that uh, pandemic period we are far away from uh, the teaching teaching and learning also because teacher teaches and when he teaches he twicely learn right and today you teach us about the with various example like agenda 20 and it is for social development you reveal the importance of equity removal of poverty and disparities a removal of disparities uh from hello sir party. hello yes. hello yes. sir yes. please wind up uh, next uh, niger yes, yes, uh, within, 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 within sir please yes yes within one minute i will wind up uh the last point uh on economics with pertaining to the sustain uh, sustainable development uh sir light on the gap between the poor and rich then he reveal the truth of the society that rich people avail the most resources which is available in the nature he has quoted economics with environment bias is past is is the path to sustainable development and at the end to make environment healthy he suggested that renew the resource rate of consumption uh, should be reduced and then follow the environmental laws like environmental laws the environmental protection law and he also suggested that to ban on plastic material to refuse the usual of package preservatives and finally sir i i like that more that life is more important but life will be easy and healthy when we care our environment and when we care our environment we will definitely get sustainable development thank you sir paul all the saying and sharing your words of wisdom with us your message will definitely important for sustainable development uh, not only uh, it's sustainable development overall uh, development of uh, us thank you thank you very much thank you uh, dr bhagat sir okay. thank you very much for being with us i express my deep gratitude towards both dr saptashi sir and dr bhagat sir now without wasting much time we are moving towards plenary session in this session we have a resource person with us dr baba lula samuel sir he is from department of fever and applied zoology federal university of agriculture ogun state nigeria africa and in this session we have appointed chairman as a chairman dr sandeep bausai banjari head and assistant professor department of commerce and management science rb atal arts science and commerce college gevrai i welcome both of you sir and uh, without losing much time that uh, we have a, a great personality with us dr babalula sir i request dr babalula samuel sir to deliver his speech on the topic over to you dr samuel sir good morning everyone am i audible enough sir you are audible yes okay thank you very much i would like to share my screen right now yes sir yes sir go ahead sir sir go ahead please go ahead oh, okay so good morning once again um, it's really a pleasure to be with us again this morning uh and i want to also thank the organizing committee of this great and wonderful conference so this morning i will be talking on science and technology in de developing countries what are the current situation and future opportunities this morning we will be looking at life in the past and what we have now we will be looking at 
how science and technology has improved our scientific inventions and discovery. We'll be looking at technologies, practical technologies in our daily lives. We will also look at the possible misuse of science and technology and also look at science and technology in the future. about technology. Number one is that uh, science of today is the technology of tomorrow by Edward Teller. That is, whatsoever science we practice today will be what we develop into technology tomorrow. Also, another quote says that modern technology owes ecology and apology. In some ways, advent of technology has really, really posed a negative impact on the ecology, that is the environment in which we have plants, animals, and even humans. So having said this, there is a particular sustainable development goal, which is sustainable development goal number nine, that actually uh is talking about science and technology and it says industry innovation and infrastructure should be well enhanced that is the sdg number nine apart from this all these sustainable development goals we are talking about is uh, there is no way they will be able, they will be achievable if we don't inculcate science and technology into them. They all require some level of science and technology. So what are we saying is that science and technology is actually a very, very important aspect of our life whether we like it or not we have gotten to a stage where we cannot do without science and technology let us see some few slides when we are talking about science and technology we are talking about science itself trying to divine science we are saying science is the organized body of knowledge that is a stepwise procedure where an idea is conceived is researched and it moves, moves, moves to a stage where we are using it to solve problems. So when we are using science to solve problems, then we are talking about technology, inventions, technological pro pro progress, everyday usage of modern technology. And uh, when we talk about all these advantages of technologies, we have to also consider the disadvantages. That is, what are the pitfalls of using modern technology in life. Now I have some few pictures here. We can see a very nice car. We can see the television screen. We can see a headset with microphone. We can see a record player. We can see a USB flash drive. We can see a mobile phone. We can see a computer. We can see a remote control. The question I want to ask this morning is that which of these things can we do without? Which of these things do we think we can even imagine that they are not available at this present age? If we try to look at some years back, all these things are not in place. But today, through advanced science, which leads to improvement in technology, life has been made easier because of this for instance this conference we are having this morning if it were to be some years back i have to come in person <laughs> but now we can actually have a face-to-face -face conference at the comfort of our homes that is how beautiful technology is through the uh, advancement in science okay let's go a little bit back on some of our slides we can actually see 
a train, old train. <laughs> Look at the old telephone. Look at this very big desktop computer. Look at the old um, television. We can see that they are very, very old stuffs. It's, it's showing us that technology is actually advancing. When we compare it to what we have today. Now, let's look at the example of what we have today. Look at a very beautiful kitchen with air conditioner, with refrigerator, very neat, well equipped. Years back, we don't have something like this. So we can see how technology has actually made life easy. We can see how technology has actually made life more beautiful. Look at the invention in medicine. Look at this young man. He's using a prosthetic leg. Probably because he lost his leg. If it were to be some years back, he become disabled or incapacitated. But now he can freely move to anywhere he wants to. Look at an X-ray for diagnosis. Look at a standard hospital environment. What about DNA extractions? What about drug, di drug discovery? A lot of diseases now can be treated effectively. Thank God to improvements in science and technology. All these things involve high level of technology or technological advancements. Okay, I have one very funny picture here. Look at these two people riding on horses and look at a car. Can we compare and contrast the means of travel in the past? Can we actually compare the means of travel in the past and today? we can see that uh, things has really changed. Things are now more comfortable. A horse cannot travel several kilometers in a day, but a car can do. You can go by flight, a journey of 10 hours by car, you can do it under 45 minutes by flight. Now the question is, how will the means of travel change in the future? What kind of fuel will be used? That is technological advancement. Now, there is one thing that we have to take notes at this point. We have so many threats in using modern technology. One of it is waste of money. Another one is loneliness. When everybody is busy, madly in love with technology, what about health problems? All these are our mobile phones, they emit radiations. They come at a price. They emit radiations. Technological advancement has brought about even negative effects on the climate. What about unemployment? When uh, machines now do everything that human beings used to do before. We also have addiction. All these are part of the negative aspect of using technology in everyday life. We have so many more. How will science and technology change the life of people in the future? You can see a notepad with biro and pencil. You don't need to be going with leaflet again. You write everything you want to write and you are good. What about solar-powered cars? What about advanced molecular studies, the use of satellites, and building of skyscraper? You can build up to 100-story building on one plot of land. You have more rooms, less space. Look at the pictures below as well. You can now have online class classrooms. You can have a projector, you have printer, you have everything, and it's very easy to use. Now, 
we can confidently say that science is the real drive behind technology. We live in a golden age of technological, medical, scientific, and social progress. Look at our computers, our phones. Some 20 years ago, the internet was just a clicky machine for geeks. Now we can't imagine life without it. We are even on the verge of medical breakthroughs that would have seemed like magic only half a century ago. Now people cloned organs, stem cell therapies to repair our own very DNA. Science has touched virtually all areas of life. Globally, we have experienced tremendous advancement in science in virtually all areas of life, including, but not limited to these following selected areas. In health, we have done that. We have really experienced science and high level of technology in education, in agriculture, use of genetic modified uh, plant varieties, genetic modified animals, genetically modified animals, animals that are more resistant to diseases, plants that are more resistant to diseases, they are part of technological advancements in agriculture. What about food and potable water? All the purification system of water, now uh, we hold it to actually the advancement in technology through properly uh, engaged uh, science. What about in engineering, entertainment industry, transportation, even in economy, even in our security system, and energy? Science has touched virtually all areas. Now, we have to talk about science in developing countries. Despite the recent advances in science, it has become obvious over the years that developing countries are still lagging behind. And this gave us the name developing nations. Because we are characterized by lack of basic structures that have been provided by science delivering technology even many years ago. Just imagine a whole country that cannot boast of 18 hours of electricity supply to our citizens. What about bad and terrible roads coupled with high level of insecurity and famine? Imagine a country where they have to export ordinary toothpick. Those are the things that is the characteristics of science and technology in developing nations. Now, what are the problems? When we are talking about sustainable development goals, that is, we are talking about advancement in industry, innovation, and technology. And we are saying developing countries are still lagging behind in achieving these sustainable development goals. What are the factors, problems that are actually responsible for this? Number one is lack of a well-functioning scientific innovation ecosystem. When the system is not supporting scientific innovation. When there is no proper coordination between the scientific holders, the major stakeholders, and people that are supposed to be involved in forming policies that will make science thrive, then we are talking about a poor scientific ecosystem. And this is the number one problem that uh developing nations are actually facing then we also have what we call brain drain now when the scientific ecosystem is not well is not okay is not balanced a lot of science oriented people in developing countries the, the, the and brilliant minds they leave developing countries in mass to search for a more comfortable environment or a more comfortable 
ecosystem where science is properly integrated into the system. This will now result in what we call brain drain in the so-called developing nations of the world. And that is why the developed countries become more developed, why the less developed countries become even more or less developed. One of the major things that also affects scientific advancements in developing nations is corruption. Corruption can kill a beautiful thing. And uh, also lack of political will. We also have misplaced priorities when uh, the leaders or the, the, the policy makers in developing nations misplace their priorities to stuff that won't even help the nation. We also have the issue of neglected importance in developing countries. Most of these countries that are termed as developing countries or less developed countries, they fail to stress that for long-term effectiveness, for sustainable if technology and science, there should be what we call technology transfer. We should always be accompanied by science transfer. If you are not properly practicing science and you are not transferring science, you cannot improve in technology. And that sustainable development go nigh, and even other sustainable development will not be achievable in developing countries. That is from the simplest to the most highly complex industrial products. They are based upon rapid advances and accumulation of scientific knowledge in various related areas. Compared to technologists, economists, and planners, the extent, extent to which scientists are allowed to play a role in nation building is another important problem. Few developing countries have formulated such a policy of allowing scientists to play their role. In developing countries, scientists are not allowed to actually play their roles because they are the one that are supposed to actually mediate between science, technology, and the people. But even when developing countries are making policies, they don't evolve these scientists. So how do you want the country to actually develop? It is not, it is, it is actually very sad. It is actually very sad. What major thing did the developed world do it to progress way faster than the so-called developing countries? One, in developing countries today, basic and applied scientific research is an essential investment in the long-term welfare. They will even sponsor people from developing countries to come and even do their science for them. Unlike the developed countries with myopic view of science, which is aimed at achieving short-term goals, our science in developing countries is still aimed at achieving short-term goals. And that is why we cannot progress, we cannot make significant impact. That is why we cannot transcend from being less developed to developed. In the universities, in the developed countries, they assign highest priority to stimulating and nurturing scientific and technical talent. And this also led to the concomitant training of students. They train their students, they invest big time, they, assess, they assign priority to stimulating and nurturing scientific and technical talent. What emerged from this priority is the close association of education and economical growth. 
we will now see that their economy grow faster. They also accelerate the growth and rate of productivity because they stimulate and support scientific education in the university. In developing countries, what we do mostly is theoretical science. We don't even, we don't really pay, give priority to practical science. We pay more priority to theoretical science. People practice science only in their brain in developing countries. And that is why we cannot progress. Science in developed, developing countries has been treated as a marginal activity. They are perceived even as anonymous ornaments. Indeed, most of the developing countries do not realize that their, their situation can only be rectified with the infusion of modern science and technology into their societies. Although some of the developing countries are aware of the importance of science and technology, but this awareness does not necessarily make it easy to develop and popularize science. So we have not been able to develop and popularize science in developing countries. Inadequate scientific infrastructure is a critical factor which creates strong barriers to the path of advancement in developing countries. Until we provide scientific infrastructure that is adequate enough, we won't be able to progress or advance in science in developing countries. What are the strategies and policies that we can actually adopt for developing countries so that we can move forward and achieve the sustainable development goals? One, we should, modern science should infuse every aspect of economic and social life. For this reason, education, research, and technology as instruments for accelerating development should receive special attention in national planning in developing countries. Also, developing countries should attempt to formulate and adopt a national policy that will be aimed at development of science and technology even at the lowest level. In order to make a realistic plan, not only a vision, but a scientific leadership and investment in science enterprise, both by government and private sector, are actually required. When we invest in short-term goals in science, it will be mostly costly and time-consuming. We should actually look at long-term goals. Then institutions for scientific education and research-oriented professors, well-equipped laboratory, modern libraries, and archives within this institution constitute the minimum requirement of a scientific infrastructure in any developing countries, and it must be provided for. In order to establish this infrastructure, the support and funding for university should increase, and the government and those involved should be very, very sincere and keen about it. The science policy in a developing country should be determined in collaboration with the government, universities, and industry. This must be addressed to establish an industry university corporation and to communicate technological advances to potential users. Developing countries which plan to have a rapid economic growth and which plan to achieve the sustainable development goals to first consider if they have provided ideal opportunities for their high-level scientists and nurture their talent for the nation well being. It is what they must consider. They must ensure that they provide the general opportunities for their high-level scientists and nurture their talents for the nation's well-being. Furthermore, these countries must ensure the economic and social well-being of their scientists and provide an attractive and well-equipped research environment to their migration 
to countries with a rich scientific and social opportunities. They should send people out to go and learn from developing countries and bring it back to this Science and technology-based industries should be identified as a major source of economic growth and a means of addressing important social problems as well. My conclusion, developing countries should be committed to retaining high-level scientists, stimulate them and provide funds and other support to encourage and maintain their productivity. Science and technology is very, very important. It comes with these disadvantages, but how do we overcome these advantages when we are still lagging behind? Of the public developing countries, there is need to go back to the drawing board. There is need to go back and trace all the issues raised this morning and check where we have missed it and try to improve, take some of these recommendations, work on them and try to improve, to, to, to prioritize science in developing countries. Then I can bet it, in a matter of a few years, a lot of developing or less developed nations will migrate from being less developed to develop. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you for listening. This marks the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now the chairperson of this plenary session, Dr. Sandeep Vandari, sir, head and assistant professor, Department of Commerce and Management, RB Atal Art Science and Commerce College, Kevrai. May I request Dr. Sandeep, sir, to express his views on this plenary session. Over to you, Dr. Sandeep, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Please check whether I am able to call or... Yes, yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to mark that Mr. Dr. Samuel, having uh, have given uh, the good thought on sustainable development. I really appreciate his talk, sir. Dr. Samuel, really, you uh, your thought on uh, the developing countries and uh, uh, the sustainable de uh, sustainable development uh, in the developing countries is uh, uh, really uh, cautious efforts because it's a need of uh, today's time. And uh, uh, as per my point of view, for sustainable development uh, is not a new concept. Uh, it has been followed by many countries over the year within an aim of maintaining a balance between livelihood and nature as well as economy. The concept of sustainability development can be also referred to as environmentally sustainable economic growth. Sustainable development looks to create the balance between economic environment and social need. So uh, from the last two or three decades, we have seen that for the sake of economic growth, the health of the environment has taken a toll. As a result, there has been an impact on the environment, uh, such as uh, decline the air quality uh, and climate change due to the greenhouses, gases, and etc. So on. So uh, the the basic objective of uh, sustainable development is that the economic growth, uh, protection of environment, and social inclusion. Uh, this focuses on the providing the facility of uh, housing for uh, future generation and uh, assisting in creating healthy, strong and vibrant global communities. So it is also important for the available resources, use of available resource, uh, resources judicially and working towards the maintaining uh, ecological balance. It is also important for that 
to prevent uh, degradation of the environment and lying emphasis on the protection the environment and prevent over expl exploitation of resources so uh, dr samuel really you uh, express your thought very uh, carefully and uh, after study so really once again i appreciate your efforts and talk so uh, thank you uh, one and all and thank you uh, dr samuel for your further research and all all and one thank you sir to giving me this opportunity to express my thoughts on uh, samuel's talk so once again thanks a lot welcome dr you, michael sir. sir we are really indebted to you to both dr samuel sir and dr sandeep bhandari sir now we are moving towards the next session in this session the main speaker is dr michael sir who is head department of mathematics and computer science and also he is director ict coal city university nigeria he is from abroad i welcome him and the chair person of this session is dr bala saheb main sir he department of economics and assistant professor vasantrao kale mahavidyalay doki i welcome both the speakers on the behalf of dr shankar agutte gramin arts commerce and science college on the behalf of department of economics and department of commerce and iqs now i call upon dr michael sir who is from nigeria may i request dr michael sir to express his views on the topic of the conference dr michael sir. all right um thank you very much um please can you hear me yes sir yes sir you are clearly audible go ahead sir all right um thank you very much i want to appreciate the organizers of this um conference for inviting me as one of the resource persons i also want to um thank um, the first speaker uh, dr babalola for a job well done because of time um i'm not going to waste further time on um pleasantries i will go straight to my topic today i'll be asked to speak about research trends in educational technology popularly known as um, edutech um as rightly introduced i don't know if my uh, slide can be shared from there please can you share my slide i sent earlier so um my my brief profile is in the first uh, of my slide there um when we talk about education technology we are talking about how we can incorporate the internet or icts to actually improve our teaching and learning experiences both of that of the teacher and the learner we are talking about how we can use innovative ways to be able to improve the quality of education how can we use innovative technologies to be able to enhance inclusive education now basically education technology aims to solve problems and concerns and some of these problems include motivation problem what do i mean when you have poor performance of students when you have poor teaching methodologies and all of that sometimes one of those factors could be as a result of motivation when the teacher is not motivated or when the student is motivated to teach or when the students or the learner is not motivated to learn so the use of education technology can actually promote motivation for both the teacher and the learner now we talk about discipline education technology can help to promote discipline within a system when we talk about quality assurance in education a lot of security measures are put in place in a lot of learning management systems or use of innovative technologies to improve 
the quality of education in terms of supervision and a whole lot of them like that, including the CCTV cameras or other innovative technologies that are available. Now, education technology, again, can as well help in reducing the number of dropout students, particularly in developing countries. What do I mean by this? With the use of educational technologies, people can learn from distance. The, the barrier of physical, uh, the barrier that is established by physical learning is being reduced because people can learn from comfort of their zone. And um, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the disruptions that come with it is a very good case study to this because a lot of people are able to learn from a distance, teach and learn from online, online education, virtual education made possible using innovative education technologies. Now, uh, uh, this is just the introduction uh, because part of the things that the education technology does is also to add value to teaching and learning, to research activities. So education has moved from just theories to value creation. How do we create value? Talking about concept of technopreneurship or entrepreneurship. So education technology is making all this possible, that people can work and learn at the same time. People can create innovative solutions to solve day to do problem of human society. Taking education outside the border of the classroom and all of that. These are some of the things that education technology is doing. Now, um, research in education technology is actually in its infancy particularly in developing countries like my own country, Nigeria. And I know in many countries in Africa and even in Asia. So research in education technology is actually a growing trend. It's, there's is a green area that researchers should look at. And that is why this topic is very important for us to understand some of these scope areas that researchers can develop interest in education technology. Please, can you share my slide, please? Can you share the screen, the slide? Uh, Professor Santosh, can you please share the slide? Now let's look at the growth of education technology in recent time. We all, you can all agree with me that the internet actually uh, has expanded faster than we predicted, than we expected. And that is actually leading to growth in education technology. What I'm trying to say is that internet revolution is playing a key role in expansion and the use of education technology. For instance, in 2019 alone, the market of education technology companies was valued at $187 million. That's as of 2019, $187 million, the market value of education technologies. But as of 2020, year 2020, at the peak of COVID-19, education technology market is projected to hit $404 billion by 2025. This is according to Global News 2020. So you can imagine from $187 billion to $404 billion in 2020. There's a steady growth in education technology. So the rise in education technology actually goes hand in hand with an increasing demand for online learning. You, you all know that the quick transition so online education, particularly during the COVID-19, has actually increased the demand for education technology across the world, including in developing countries. Here in Coast City University, where I'm a head of department and also a director, we were able to ensure continued education during the COVID-19 lockdown using our learning management system. We call it, we it my CCU. Now, another research has shown that 92% of teachers believe that education technology is going to have a major impact on the way they educate in the near future. That's according to uh, builtin.com slash edu. Now let's look at education technology research objectives. Now, there are several objectives of education technology research but one of them is actually to familiarize rise the learn, to in, improve the learner's experience, to, like I've said earlier on, and actually to be able to increase motivation of learners, improve quality of education, and also to help in, in staff 
or teacher's professional development. All of that is being done to enhance inclusiveness in education and so many other things. Curriculum development, enhanced curriculum development is part of the things that education technology helps when we talk about e-content development. Okay, improving the psychological well-being of the teacher and the learner. Education technology is helping to do that. Now, because of time, I'm trying to rush my presentations. Now, why education technology research? Why must we do education technology research? That's the question, before we start looking at the research areas. Number one is that the new reality in education for demand that more research be done in education technology. What are we talking about the new reality? The new reality is online education, technology-based education. Today now, a lot of, a lot of um, tertiary institutions, education institutions are looking for ways to shift their learning to online. And the online education depends on, techn on technologies, education technologies, for it to be effective, for it to be properly disseminated. So that's one of the reasons. The COVID reality, COVID reality and post-COVID reality demand that universities or educational institutions, colleges should be able to have a backup learning platform, like the concept of blended learning, for instance, which is a combination of online learning and physical learning, or flip learning, concept of flipping classrooms or flip classrooms. So online ed ed education technology makes all of this possible. Now, or uh, even inquiry-based learning makes this possible. Uh, or, I mean, um, um, education technology makes it, all of this possible. Then we talk about quality and education innovation. So for us to improve the quality of assessment, quality of teaching, quality of curriculum, education technology research is needed. Then, of course, employability skill and entrepreneurship. Today, we are talking about study and learn. How do we make it possible? for students to be able to study and learn, I mean, learn and work at the same time, particularly in developing countries where the poverty rate is very high. For instance, in Nigeria, about 100 million people live in, in poverty, okay? So, and many other countries of the world, the poverty index, there's an incremental, you know, there's, a, 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 there's an increment, exponential increase in the poverty rate across the world. And COVID-19 has actually increased it. How do we make sure that people are not dropped out of school as a result of poverty in such a way that people can actually study and learn from their home. Employability skill again, how do we improve the employability skill of our students? Education technology can help them to engage in professional courses in Udemy, Coursera, Blackboard, and a whole lot of them, Schoolology, and a whole lot of them that are available out there. So education technology makes this possible. Then gap in learning preferences. One of the things that education technology research does is to provide learning, learning preference, help um, learners to be able to choose their preferences, what they want to learn. So education technology is able to help learners to manage their learning style, help educators to manage the learning styles of students. So different learners with different learning styles. The concept of machine learning, algorithm, a whole lot of them models, artificial intelligence, robotics, and helping educational institutions to be able to predict the learning style of students, the learning pattern of students, and they are able to use it to help at-risk students to improve their performances. So uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, uh, machine learning, a whole lot of them are helping in this regard. And I have uh, published some papers we need education technology research for computational thinking. What do we mean? Um, use of educational technologies. People are looking to have innovative thinking skills. Fuse or diffuse into education. To bridge the to child in education. So, how do we solve problems, societal problems, community problems? How do we improve the quality of research? Because research should be about in scope of publishing in SI, ESI, and uh, Web of Science, Test Journal, and all of that. In the quality of research, you know, improving. 
Bloom's taxonomy can actually be proved and realized, and of course, Abraham Maslow. Maslow's theory of motivation can actually be achieved. Remember the 1948 uh, theory as well. Then we talk about global and online learning. With the use of education technology research, we are having a lot of collaborations today. And I know at the end of this lecture, I will collaborate with some of you in quality um, research publications and a whole lot of them. So education technology is enhancing this. Need for flexibility is one of the need for education technology research to make teaching and learning to be flexible in such a way that you can have synchronous and asynchronous learning when it comes to the e-learning style and all of that, making sure that we introduce flexibility in what we teach, what we learn. Education technology is making this possible. Need for learners involvement again. This is very important. Education methodology is moving from teacher-centered to learner-centered education. We are talking about inquiry-based teaching, inquiry-based learning. How do we promote more learner participation in the teaching and learning process. And that's why the concept of flipped classroom, flipped classroom, flipping uh, teaching strategy comes up. How do we make sure that there's more student uh, involvement in the teaching and learning process? How do we make sure that this problem solving of students are improving? So education is moving from theory to problem solving. So in order to achieve this, they need technology to be able to carry out research to improve their research skills, their cognitive skills, and or, or psychomotor skill and all of that. Then, um, of course, um, mass my digital citizenship and all of that. Now let's look at research trends in education technology, basically, which is why I'm here. Now, more research is needed to develop technologies that can actually improve learner engagement and motivation. So in this regard, though there are a lot of technologies that have been developed, but more is needed in education. How do we improve? motivation for teachers, motivation for students. More research is needed in this area. Then we need more research in technologies that can address specific concepts and subjects in education. Because what we have now is that we have generic technologies. We have generic technology. We need more technologies that can help a mathematics teacher to teach online effectively, that can help science education to, to be taught online. Because one of the challenges or gaps we have during the COVID-19 is Practical-based uh, subjects. I, I, I have problems during the, 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 the online learning because how do you communicate? How do you teach programming online? How do you teach science-based education online that requires practical chemistry, mathematics, biology, and a lot of them? So we need more research in this regard uh, than we have presently. Then we, we need uh, more technologies that can offer personalized learning. Okay, we need to develop more AI-driven system, more IoT-driven uh, devices, smart devices that can actually help learners to be able to learn on their own. We talk, we, we talk about the concept of personalized learning, independent learning, all right? So whereby the student can study more on their own and then gain knowledge and be able to improve their skill, you know, to their thinking skill, their reasoning skills, their creative skills. So more research is needed in this way to develop more personalized technologies, particularly in the use of AI, artificial intelligence. Then assistive or video assisting learning tools. Now we, we are talking, we are in the era of um, inclusiveness, where people are trying to promote inclusiveness in education. Now more research is needed to develop more assistive technologies that can help the, the, the less privileged people, the fiscally challenged to be able to participate in education, to participate in teaching and learning, in research. So we need more assistive technologies that can help people with hearing impairment, visual impairment, or even physical disabilities to be able to learn, to be able to attend schools, to be able to learn from comfort of their, zoo, of their room, or to be able to learn on the go. So though we have some of these technologies now, but some of them are very expensive. So if we have more products, more assistive products, uh, teaching and learning products, we find out that the price will come down and it will be uh, uh, more affordable for schools to acquire, for laboratories to have them to promote education. Then we talk about um, simulation. More, we need more simulation software that can, that can promote practicality in education. 
what do we mean when we talk about modeling and simulation one of the things that modeling and simulation does for you is to reduce cost and reduce risk when you for instance when you talk about flight sim simulators car simulators and a lot of them virtual reality virtual um, and the augmented reality products all of these technologies are expensive today because the research into them are still very rare, are still very few. So how do we, we need more research to develop more affordable virtual reality, augmented reality products. And you know that the use of v, VR or AR, augmented reality product, actually promote user experiences, promote, it, promote output in education, promote understandability of product and concept by learners in education. So we need more of research in this particular area. Then grading systems. So we need more grading systems that can actually be able to assist educa educators or teachers to be able to grade uh, responses automatically, all right, uh, via peer grading. One of the, uh, this area is very, very important. Even though we have a lot of uh, learning management systems that inculcate the concept of automatic grading and all of that, we, but we need more to make sure that there's actually accuracy to promote more accuracy, more precision. Machine learning algorithms and AI will do a lot of good job in this area to be able to improve, improve the grading uh, system in education. Then social media learning, how do we promote the use of social media for education? A lot has been done about Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, um, link, LinkedIn and a whole lot of them like that. Yes, a lot of researchers are using it to promote the academic profile, but how do we use it? Because a lot of students, million, billions of students are online. According to the, 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 the uh, some uh, recent statistics by International Telecommunication Union, E2, in, uh, it stated that about 63.1% of um, people are online presently. And what are they looking for? They are looking for content. They are looking for information, all right? And this, how do we, how do we as education sector, how do we maximize the presence, the large migration of people online, the use of social media? For educational purposes, how can educational institutions maximize their social media platforms to promote teaching and learning to be able to have quality of education? We need more research in this regard. We need more paper, more quality paper on how schools can maximize social media pages for education outside advertising um, their schools, outside um, talking about their programs. How we use it to be able to promote learning since it is easily accessible by most students, particularly in rural areas or underdeveloped countries. Now, um. Uh, okay, going further, then we can look at, we need more research in uh, massive open online content courses, for instance, MOOC. So we need more MOOCs to be developed so that people can actually use it, especially in this era of uh, migration to online learning. Then we need more educational applications on different subjects, more mobile devices that can promote the teaching of certain subjects. I've talked about it late, uh, before. Then we need educational games. Because most of the children, they tend to learn more using game. Gamification is one of the uh, emerging areas in education technology. So we need more people who can develop more educational games that can assist our kids, our children to be able to learn more and faster. Then we need more uh, conferencing, visual conferencing or learning technologies. Yes, we have Zoom now, we have Blue Jeans, we have Google Meet. We need more. We need more. Imagine the Zoom and all of that, some of them. So we need more, more of these uh, teleconferencing tool or visual learning technologies so that people can actually use it to be able, like visiting professors in different schools. People can be in India, they can deliver lectures in Nigeria, universities, and uh, vice versa, and other countries across, across the world. So we need more technologies that are cheaper, more trustworthy, that can uh, be able to protect both the user privacy and all of that then we need more of them. Then we need more collaborative software that can enhance collaboration between researchers, educators, students across the world. We need more of it. We need more on-marking, on-screen marking software that can, people can use to mark papers and manuscripts or correct or review papers on the screen. We need more of this software to come on board. Now, of course, we need adaptive learning systems. Adaptive learning systems are very, very key that can actually uh, adapt to changes within the environment, within the education policies and all of that. We need more of this. We need more education technologies that can promote cyber security. 
because today across the world, a lot of schools, a lot of educational institutions and colleges are moving online. But nobody is talking about the cyber security implication of moving online. We need more research in this regard. What is the cyber security implication of migration to online education? So how do we, uh, we need more research to develop more cyber security mechanisms that can actually promote data security, data integrity, as more educational institutions are migrating their services or databases online. So more research is needed in this regard in order to be able to ward off cyber threats and attack, which has become a reality, a global reality as we speak. As we all know, a lot of schools are the victim of cyber threats and attack, particularly during this COVID-19. So, uh, schools and uh, university websites and university resources have been a subject of attack for cyber uh, traitors and uh, cyber criminals. So we need more research on how to improve learning management, security of learning management system, university website, security of uh, students and staff data and all of that. Very, very important. So we need more research on use of IoT devices, wearable technologies that can promote um, uh, all hand skills learning, that can promote um, teaching and learning on the go. We need more, more wearable technologies that are affordable to teachers and students so that um, teaching, we can bring practicality to education, all right? Um, so on, then let's look at some of the technologies that can actually impact, um, that has impact potentials for education technologies, research. What I'm trying to say is that these are some of the technologies that can actually play a key role in education technology research. Number one is artificial intelligence. We all know that. You can't talk about education technology research today without talking about artificial intelligence. Then number two, we talk about machine learning and learning analytics. Of course, machine learning is part of artificial intelligence, is a part of artificial intelligence family. So we need more uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, KNN, K nearest neighbor algorithms, um, Bayes, Naiz, Bayes, and a lot of them, forest algorithm, decision tree algorithm, um, um, what do I call it now? Um, artificial neural network, convolutional neural network. We need more. Uh, those, uh, these technologies are going to play a role. Robotics, robotics technology, of course, because we are talking about how do we develop um, educational robots that can help teachers, help students to improve their skills and learn fast and all of that. Blockchain technology in terms of education, data security, and a lot of them. Blockchain is going to play a role. IoT, I've talked about it. Wearable uh, de educational devices, how do we develop it? IoT is going to play a lot of role in this regard. Big data, big data. You know, educational institutions have us a lot of data. So big data and big data analytics has been used by social media platform. Education institutions is going to uh, you know, need it to be able to analyze their students' data, trace them, Illumina, and a whole lot of them like that. So big data is going to play a role. I've talked about mobile technologies that has a very high penetration. I've written a lot of papers on mobile technology and education. So um, we, uh, mobile technology is, of course, going to play a role uh, in education technology device because it's a smartphone and a whole lot of them like that. Then um, internet technology, of course, very, very important. You can't talk about online education without talking about the internet technology. So we're going to it's playing a role. And that is why recently in the United States, you see some internet service providers offering reduction in internet subscription rates so to promote access so internet technology is going to certainly play a big 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 role and so many other things video and audio technologies that are also going to play a role because people are moving to in the use of videos now as we're moving to the online learning we need more videos we need more audios that actually promote students understanding of concept now summary because of my time uh, this is my summary of this lecture. Technology has changed from being a peripheral factor to becoming more central in education. The fusion of technology in education is making a headway for better, more inclusive future. What am I trying to say? The bond, the relationship between education and technology is increasing every day. So teachers and students have to get up. We need to, uh, we need to um, um, enhance our competitive skills our competence in use of technology because it's going to play a big role in the future of education. So this is very, very important. Then education tools, we make it easier for teachers to create individualized lesson plans and all of that. So more research is needed and personalized learning, which we have talked about earlier. Research in education technology must reflect the present and future need of education stakeholders, including persons in, uh, with learning 
uh, disabilities. So what are we trying to say? Uh, as we clamor for more research in education technology, it must be directed towards problem solving. We must also uh, take into, into consideration special people, people with special needs, so that they, we also do more research on them, on how we can help them to get education and equal access, have equal access to education as well. Then we talked about education technology product must be pleasurable to accommodate change and teaching and learning diversities. This is very key. As we are researching into education technology products and researches, we must make sure that the research and the products we are developing is flexible enough to accommodate diversities, to accommodate uh, changes within our environment, within our curriculum, and a whole lot of them like that. So uh, again, education technology researchers must be able to develop products that are eco-friendly. Very, very important. We are in the we are in era of global warming, climate change. So we must make sure that we don't threaten our climate further. So as we are developing some of these technologies, education technology, we must make sure that we use eco-friendly materials in order to preserve our internet, our, our planet, as the case may be. Thank you very much. As well, uh, finally, um, education technology will remain a green area. So what I'm trying to say is that don't be afraid to go into education technology research because it has a future, it has prospect, it has potential. It's something that is going to be profitable to humanity, to the researcher, to the education sector, to all of us indeed. So it is very important that we develop interest. There are challenges that often discourage people from going into education technology research. For instance, funding. Funding is an issue. Time constraints is an issue. Lack of incentive is an issue. Government, unstable government policies is an issue. Pandemics like what we have now is an issue. So, but all of these should not discourage you, continue to be um, determined to engage in some of this research. Thank you very much for inviting me um, for this research. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Michael, sir. Thank you for your brilliant and beneficial speech. Now, I call upon the chairman of this session, Dr. Balasad Main, sir, the Department of Economics from Vasantrao Kale Mahavidyale, Doki. Uh, I request Dr. Mayan, sir, to express his views on this session. Dr. Mayan, sir. Dr. Mayan, sir. Ah, sir. Yes. Good evening Thank to you. all of you. Jai Bhagwan Seva Bhavi Sanstha, Shankar. Gramin Arts, Commerce and Science College, Dharmapuri District Bid, organize multidisciplinary international e-conference on multidisciplinary perspectives on business management, social science, humanities, economics, law, marketing, education, environment, science, and technology towards sustainable development. Organized committee by IQSC Economics and Commerce Department Welcome to all organized committees. This seminar may abhi Dr. Michael Sir ne jo present ki ho bhoot hi ghar was not education and online technology ke baare mein yahan present kiya hai. Isme unhone education, research, technology, online education, quality of technology, quality of innovation, research, trade in educational technology, uh, learning technology, research, and educational importance. Michael, Dr. Michael Sir ne yaha kiya hai. Isle Michael, Dr. Michael Sir ka mai heartly bahut bahut congratulation karta hu. Heartly thanks maanta hu. Is okay sir. Dr. Balas and Mentor, thank you, thank you very much. Now we are moving towards the last session that is validatory session. The, pres the president of this session is Dr. Suresh Mentor. He is professor of Mumbai School of Economics and Public Policy, University of Mumbai. Now we are moving towards this last session. I want to I'm really thankful to you, all of you, for your support, for your encouragement that we have received more than 150 papers.
from all over the country we have received so many papers i'm really thankful to you for making our conference successful now i will call upon dr suresh main sir to express his views in military function dr main sir over to you sir Dr Suresh Main sir kindly unmute yourself Dr Main sir Dr Main sir are you there sir will you call sir will you call sir will you call please please get Dr. Mayan sir, are you there? I think he joined. Dr. Mayan sir, please unmute yourself. You are muted. Sir, you are in a mute state. Kindly unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Just uh, one minute. I think my laptop just now hang. So I'm now joining from the mobile. So I think uh, okay. Then I would just uh, I think uh, continue with the mobile. Right, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Still, you are uh, audible. Still, I'm getting up. Okay, 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 okay. I'm audible well. Okay, uh, yes, yes, I sir, think. Uh, thank you, first of all. Okay, sir. Uh, respected uh, organizer of this conference, Shankara Gute College, Dhamapuri, IQC and uh, Economics Department, as well as the Commerce Department of the college. Uh, respected principal, Dr. Volumbe sir, president of the college, Dr. Shivaji Gute sir. Uh, and uh, all head of departments uh, of the college uh, my friend uh, professor kaule sir who was the chairman of this last session uh, dr balaji also the i think the last session which chaired by the professor indrajit bhagat my dear friend all the resource persons inaugural keynote uh, speaker uh, pravin uh, saptarshi sir i think we know uh, at one place uh, where we togetherly i think uh, worked uh, in the pune i don't know exactly he will recognize or not uh, i think in the viva uh, we uh, worked togetherly uh, all the resource persons of the this international seminar uh all the faculty members from the different colleges and different areas also all the my student participants and dear all first of all i would like to express my great uh, gratitude to the college you invited me for the uh, discussion of this international seminar and uh, i also would like to much appreciate to the college and uh, to the organizer for selection of the team which is uh, very much significant in the today's era uh, definitely 
i would like to also appreciate to the college because when i seen this college which is working in the very rural area but uh, is really appreciable and uh, i would like to also congratulate all to the team who is taking the efforts for the successful international seminar is online seminar because as you know the i think this is the best example of that whereas the uh, we are looking that the situations are creating the crisis but the few crises are creating the opportunities and all the teachers from the rural background i think it has proved that they had created this opportunities like the international webinars seminars after the covid situation so really i should uh, appreciate as a teacher to all these kind of teachers who are taking the continuous efforts for this uh, for this kind of uh, changing of the views and also for the academic excellence i joined actually this conference from the beginning meanwhile sometime i was just busy with the work but i listened to the first speaker also saptarshi sir very well sir has pointed out about the multiple dimensions of the theme which are directly and indirectly related to the sustainable development and also i Uh, listen about the views of the other resource speakers from the different countries i would appreciate to them because they had the, i think joined from this kind of uh, rural background college and given their inspirational and very much a uh, study full speech and uh, i think their views with the participants so i uh, really thankful to them who ever given the uh, justice for the team uh, throughout their uh, uh, speech and their uh, i think uh, resource uh, resource uh, that deals uh, now i would like to just say few things about the this uh, my job i think whereas uh, as a keynote speaker i should talk about the few things which are uh, related to the this uh, uh, i think theme which is the theme which is chosen by the by the organizer for this international conference i think which is i i feel as a professor of economics from university of mumbai it has the multiple angles it has the multiple scope for the discussions and which is already as said that this discussed but still if you look about the this view as a multidisciplinary view of the sustainable development it has the very large scope of discussion and uh, also for the research now in a day if you look about the globe what is happening from the everywhere we are uh, trying to use a maximum resources and that uh, competition with the various countries with the various areas are uh, going to rise with the cut throat kind of competition but we are unfortunately not looking about their limitations as you know that the i think a basic law of economics if the over uses will be rise then that uh, which will be create the scarcity and i think in the in the present era we are uh, looking in the various areas they are going to literally damage from the different different kind of uh, that uh, aspects when we are talking about the sustainable development of the uh, of the agriculture whereas the over uses of pesticides over uses of uh, i think uh, many technologies which uh, my friend i think uh, pointed out about the technology which uh, in the earlier session talked that the technology has uh, to the ecological system and uh, that is truth with the rising of the technological progress we are getting the damages from the you know soil quality about the water and uh, also 
soil conservations, global warming, and so on. That the, all the issues are directly concerned with the sustainability of the development. In the agricultural area, in the one hand, we are rising our productivity, not an issue, but now, you know, the word is going to back for the that uh, organic and also for the natural farming. That is, I think, the answer of that, that sustainable development. Whereas the uh, about the agricultural sectors, particularly if you look that uh, which is going to impact from the overuses of that all resources, not only the pesticides, not only with the fertilizers, with the uses of the technology also that is going to soil erosion and so many issues with the health of the human and also with the world and environment as Saptarshi sir pointed out, which is going to rise. I think in the economic point of view, the sustainable development has the multiple angles or multiple uh, issues. As I said, that is concerned to the you know, ecological system that is concerned with the, that, uh, you know, that uh, environmental uh, issues also with the economical aspects. So from the all kind of backgrounds, like the humanities, like the science, also in the perspective of laws, as you recall that the Kyoto protocols and the development of global platforms, they are always trying to restrict the overuses and the uh, pollution and environmental that uh, things with the laws. So that law also is uh, with the, the marketing, education, environment, technology, and so on, which are the very much interrelated aspects with the sustainable development. So here, I think I, 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 it's given only 10 minutes for me. So I should, I think, justify my 10 minutes with that. When you are going to select like the theme of the, that conference, uh, really, it has that kind of scope for the further research. So as a re young researcher, I would just appeal to you that the, from the multiple, I think, faculties and from the multiple that uh, fraternities, uh, it has the scope for the further work. I would share my own that contribution, which I am going to work on the uh, Agricultural Sustainability Index, which maybe will be, I think, helpful for the uh, mm -hmm. helpful for the policy making when the when the that the things are going to decide at the governmental uh, government level. So I think the as a young researcher, we should look about the scope of the research in the theme, which has the large scope. And suppose uh, we will select the small area for our research, which can be held for the policy makers definitely. Uh, I like the, you know, the agricultural degradation or agricultural conservation, uh, that uh, soil erosion and uh, agricultural sustainability, environmental sustainability, economic, economical sustainability, and the laws which are uh, determined for the safeguard of world. I think that will be taken and will be choose the proper uh, parameters for the further assessment with the appropriate methodologies it would be the better help for the policy makers in the coming days. So I would just uh, motivate and I would like to just enlighten it that uh, if you go for the further research and uh, uh, suppose you will choose the proper methodologies from the economics, econometrics, and also from the, I think, all backgrounds and uh, also with the primary work, it would be the great uh, outcome uh, of the this kind of uh, webinars and seminars. Whereas I think uh, the, uh, the role of Dr. Mayan, sir, is there any problem? Dr. Mayan, sir, is there any problem? Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. You are not visible also. Hello? 
Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, shortly. Wind up. Okay. 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 So, I think. Uh, yeah. Thank you for this <laughs> reminder. So, thank you so much for the uh, invited me for this uh, conference. Ani apla ya vibhaga tun saro pradhyapa kasya mule. मला आपल्याशी संवाद साधण्याची संधी मिळाली दुर्दैवाने काही कारणामुळे थोडस मला कॅमेरा ऑन करता आला नाही परंतु आपल्या सर्वांशी या माध्यमातून भेटण्याची संधी आपल्या महाविद्यालयाने दिली त्याबद्दल मी आपल्या सर्वांचे आभार मानतो अँड थँक्यू टू द ऑर्गनायझर फॉर दी प्रोव्हायडिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑपॉर्च्युनिटी Okay, I think then I'm uh, stopping here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Mahan sir. Though you were invisible, but uh, your head here very, very informative. Thank you for this. And now, at last, I request Dr. Sheila Shinde, ma'am, from our college. She is an assistant professor in the Department of Botany. Now she will give you vote of thanks, Dr. Shinde, ma'am. thank you sir uh, ladies and gentlemen a very good afternoon to all it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver out of thanks for this beautiful and most important event to all the dignitaries assembled here on this occasion i would like to thank our respected chief guest of this event dr pravin saptarshi sir visiting professor of salisbury university usa who delivered keynote address on the topic environment and honored this event with his inspirational and valuable thoughts thank you sir i would like to thank our plenary sessions resource person bablola samuel sir department of pure and applied zoology federal university of agriculture Uh, Ogun State, Nigeria, who delivered his valuable and very nice speech on industry, innovation, and infra infrastructure. I would like to thank our another resource person, Michael Sir, head department of uh, mathematics and computer science, also um, computer science and also director of ICT, whole city university, Nigeria, delivered his nice speech on uh, research trends in educational. technology then i would like to thank our uh, chair persons of different sessions dr indrajit bhagat sir assistant professor and uh, head department of commerce ashwant rao chavhan uh, mahavidyalaya ambazogai dr sandeep uh, sir uh, hod and assistant professor in department of uh, commerce and management science rb atal art science and commerce college gevrai and other chair person of plenary session dr baba uh, bab bala saheb uh, main sir hod of uh, economics department uh, vasantrao nai uh, vasantrao pale mahavidyalay bhoki dr suresh main sir professor of mumbai school of economics and public university public policy university of mumbai for attending and chaired this event in this very in him, in their very busy schedule lastly i would like to thank our beloved principal dr t l bhulambe sir our staff members students all participants volunteers and organizers last but not least uh, our beloved and sincere audition for making this event as a grand success once again i thank one and all present here i also thankful to our technical assistant mani sir for giving technical support of this event thank you thank you very much thank you all participants now i request all of you to stand to stand up and sing our national anthem together
छान छान कार्यक्रम झाला का सर धन्यवाद सर धन्यवाद एवढा खेड्यातलं कॉलेज असून तुम्ही लावून धरलं व्यवस्थित आणि कुठेही टेक्निकल फॉल्ट न करता वा छान छान थँक्यू सर प्राचार्य साहेबांचं अभिनंदन आणि कावळे कॉंग्रॅच्युलेशन कावळे सर कावळे सर कॉंग्रॅच्युलेशन चला बाय बाय सप्तर सर बाय बाय थँक यू सर डिअर ऑल पार्टिसिपंट शॉर्टली वी सेंड फीडबॅक लिंक इन व्हॉट्सअप ग्रुप अँड युअर इमेल Thank you.